Why is it so hard to change? In this video, I want to dive into an important topic of yoga philosophy that might shed a light on why we resist change so much in our lives. I can tell you that it has to do with two things, your behavior and the way you perceive. Hi, welcome to my Bohemian Dreams channel. My name is Debbie Excel. I'm a spiritual guide and intuitive leadership alchemist. I'm here to make you stretch yourself and show you who you truly are. Today is International Yoga Day. I've mentioned it before, yoga has changed my life. It's been an absolute lifesaver for me. Today, I want to talk about the concept samskara. If you tend to be reactive instead of proactive, keep watching. This video might be the beginning of a life you never imagined. Samskaras are impressions of our thoughts, desires, feelings and actions. Look at them as a record of everything you thought and felt and have done over the course of this life, but also previous lives. The samskaras provide the patterns and the content of our lives. I call them seeds of thought. And we all know seeds need to grow roots in order to ripen and come to fruition. This is the karmic swamp we call life. Our minds observe and analyze reality according to the mental schemes we have available in that particular moment. Sometimes these mental schemes are imposed upon us or taught by society. Others are imposed upon us or taught by the ego. And we simply started taking them for truth. And so we don't see reality with fresh and new and open eyes. We see everything through the eyes of the past. The mind defends its own ideas to protect the thought patterns as they are. Because change would mean we step out of the pattern and it requires active learning. And so the ego is telling us that if we don't have to change, we will find peace because we have a clear overview of how things are. We try to take control over our circumstances and we want everything to be settled into place. Everything we perceive, we see through the eyes of the past. We try to relive the most beautiful moments, but once we get the chance, the serendipity of the moment is gone. Our greatest gift is to live in the now, but our ego's thoughts always take us away from the incredible now. So in order to change things, we don't need to change our circumstances or another person or our outer reality. We need to change the way we perceive. And then we will start seeing the world through the eyes of the now. So our job is to take away this veil of illusion that we ourselves have created. And the more you start questioning everything that you see and every belief that you hold so dearly, the more you will be able to perceive in the void, without fear, without judgment, without filters. A deeper understanding of the all-encompassing truth that is non-duality. And the best thing is, the universe will repeat the lessons you need to learn over and over and over until you start seeing it, take action on it, and overcome it, and then it will present your next lesson to you. So instead of belittling yourself and talking yourself out of things before you even begin, start seeing these things as an opportunity for growth rather than considering this your fate. I often hear people ask, if God loves me so much, then why do I need to go through this? That is because God loves you so much. They are just lessons to awaken you to your true potential and the world is facilitating all of these lessons for you. And this is what I mean when I talk about yoga philosophy beyond the mat. So the asanas, the yoga poses, are just a tool to deepen your awareness and presence during your time off the mat. It will help you let the ever-changing world be what it is and find the power within you. The one thing that is timeless and changeless, your consciousness. Let it be obvious that this awakening process takes true devotion and it takes time to peel off the layers that hide our truth. It may take lives, but don't let the ego discourage you now to walk the yogic path. That is why in the upcoming weeks, I would like to talk to you about the temptations of thought that create obstacles in realizing our inner peace. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, 
leave a comment and share it with your friends. If you want to receive my emails in which I share tips and tools and behind the scenes and freebies and where you get to say what you want to see next on the show, sign up for my life-changing 30 affirmations for divine alchemy. I will leave a link in the description box below. Don't forget to stretch yourself. Namaste. Thank you.